I'm going to be talking about the two most common rounds in the world, the 7.62 by 39 and the 5.56 NATO round. Both of these have proved incredibly effective in combat for well over half a century, yet they're also both incredibly different and they both have very different strengths and weaknesses. And I'm going to compare and discuss those for you today and hopefully this will help you to make your own decision on what type of rifle you should get. I'm Jordy Buck and this is Michigan Sharpshooters, helping you become well regulated so together we can preserve our freedoms. Now first I'm going to tell you what the similarities are between these two rounds besides the fact that they're both effective and that neither of them are necessarily a poor choice. The only real similarity these have is their pressure rating. The maximum chamber pressure rating for each of these for the 5.56 NATO it's 52,000 PSI and for the 762 by 39 it's a little over 51,000 PSI so they're both very very similar in the pressure arena there now the 762 by 39 Soviet round is 30 caliber it's a 30 caliber round and the standard grain weight of the bullet is 124 grains so it's a it's about the same weight as a standard 9mm bullet, just skinnier. It's got a standard mean velocity or average velocity of 2350 feet per second. Now compare that to the 5.56 NATO which is standard with a 62 grain bullet but also is quite common with the 55 grain projectile as well. The mean velocity of the 5.56 with the lighter weight 55 grain bullet is 3200 feet per second and with the heavier 62 grain bullet it's about 3050 feet per second on average. So right off the bat we can see that the Soviet round, the 7.6239 is significantly slower than the 5.56. Now let's compare their energy, the energy of the two cartridges starting again with the 762 by 39 the average muzzle energy of the 7.6239 is about 1,550 foot-pounds of energy. At 100 yards, it's going to average about 1,200 foot-pounds of energy. And at 200 yards, it's going to average about 900 foot-pounds of energy. With the 5.56, it's a less energy bullet. It really is. At muzzle velocity, it's going to be averaging around 1,300, about 1,300 foot-pounds of energy. At 100 yards, it's going to be about 900 foot-pounds of energy. And at 200 yards, it's going to be about 600 foot-pounds of energy. Now, both rounds do start to drop off in velocity and therefore energy at around the 200-yard mark. They start to lose a little bit there. Let's go out a little further to 300 yards. What are they doing? Well, at 300 yards, the 7.62.39 has about 715 foot-pounds of energy left, which is equivalent to my 10 millimeter automatic pistol. The 5.56 at 300 yards has about 450 foot-pounds of energy, which is equivalent of a hot plus P loaded 9 millimeter. So there's a big difference in the energy there. And the reason for that is, well, it's because this one starts out with more, so it's ending up with a little more at the 300 yard mark. But that energy all in itself doesn't tell us a whole lot. Now how about bullet drop? How are they on trajectory? Well, let's figure they're both sighted in for 100 yards zero. That means at 200 yards, the heavier 76239 bullet is going to be 6 inches low and at 300 yards it's going to be two feet low. Whereas the 5.56 is zeroed at 100 yards. At 200 yards it's going to be about two and a half inches low and at 300 yards it's going to be about 12 inches low. So it has half of the drop of the heavier Soviet round. Which that's a big deal. That's the difference between making a good shot and not making a good shot. It, once you get up to two feet of of drop in the trajectory it's really getting hard to do a proper holdover for that amount of drop. So the flat shooting of the 5.56 five, 
pulls ahead big time there. Now, I've got to bring up my whiteboard and give you guys some illustrations to show you some things about the effectiveness of these two cartridges. So the 556 is a better cartridge up close. It's lower power throughout the 0 to 300 yards, lower power the whole way compared to the 76239, but it's more effective close range and I'm going to give you some illustrations on why that is. All right. What that line is is my barrier. That is the front of the target. <clears throat> So let's say you're shooting at around 50 yards, pretty close. Let's just start at 50, let's start at 50 yards with the 556. I'm just going to write that. So we've got the 556 and we've got the by 39, the 762 by 39. At at a distance of 50 yards, here's about what these bullets are going to do. The larger 30 caliber bullet will enter the target and it will keep going pretty much straight till approximately here. At somewhere around the 12 inch mark it is where it starts to have its first fluctuation approximately. Sometimes it goes quite a bit further. So right around here is where you tend to get a little bit of bullet upheaval where the bullet starts to tumble. And when that happens, now your wound channel goes from being only as wide as the bullet to suddenly about that wide. And it'll keep going for quite some ways. So that's not so wide of a wound channel, but it's a very long wound channel. It's a long penetrating round in flesh, especially at the higher velocities. Look at the 5.56 going into the same target. And within about an inch, within about the first inch, the bullet is going to be starting to tumble up. It loses its stability very, very quickly as soon as it goes into a, a hard target of any sort. And because the bullet's going so fast, 3,000 plus feet per second, once it starts upheaving, well, that bullet's not made to take stress in anything except front on. None of them are. This bullet's going so fast that when it flips, starts to flip sideways in the, into a target, the bullet fails. It's what we call major jacket failure. The bullet at this point just starts to break up into a little bit, basically like an explosion. And what you will get is from right about the one inch mark, you will get a very wide channel starting. Something like that. So the 556 five, creates a much, a much more practical wound close up. At this distance, the 76239 almost passes all the way through a torso before it does anything more than just a simple puncture channel. The 556 five, only has about an inch at tops of puncture channel, and then the bullet turns into like a small grenade cavity, basically and creates a very wide, not very deep penetrating, but a very, very wide total damage channel. And that's at close range. Now if we go out to 100 yards, it's going to be a little bit different. At 100 yards, see, at 100 yards this is going to look about the same. But the 5.56 is going to penetrate a little farther first, and it's going to have a little less drastic of a wound. That bullet comes in, it flips up, starts to fragment, but it's going to have a few bigger pieces of fragmentation going on, and it's going to penetrate a little deeper, and it's going to create a little bit longer, not as deep of a wound. Still, though, quite incapacitating up to about the 100-yard mark. Once you get past about that 100 yard mark, it really starts to slow down a bit. Now, considering that the average torso is only about that thick. See, here's the point that I'm trying to make. With the average torso only being about from here to here. 
the 762 only barely starts to make a good hole at the end. Whereas the 556 five, makes a big hole right in the beginning and all through the middle. So that's really quite optimal for closer range. But when you get out further, let's say we hit 200 yards. What are these bullets going to both look like at 200 yards? Well, at 200 yards, the 556 five, is now pretty much doing this. You, you'll get a little upheave around that point and you might get one small fragment out of it. But the wound channel is going to be something like this. It's going to be pretty skinny along this whole spot. It'll open up around here like here. Something like that. That's not very big anymore. Whereas the 76239 is still, it's going to be going a little slower, a little lower power, but it's still going to be kind of creating approximately that same wound where it's opening up more here. At this point, the 200 yard mark is where the 76239 starts to outperform the 556 NATO. Now if we push it all the way to 300 yards, at 300 yards, here's what you'll see at 300 yards. At 300 yards, you're going to see with the 556, this. Maybe you see it's going in, you might get a little bit of a curve, if you're lucky, in the distance of, we're talking a torso, from here to here. So between 12 and 16 inches thick maximum. I'm not even 12 inches thick, I'm skinny. So you'll get either a, you'll get either a, just a nice straight in and out, which is just a skinny little puncture wound. In fact, one surgeon described this particular wound from the 5.56 five, at further distance to be little more than what he would expect from a nail gun. You might get that 5.56 five, to come through, do a little bullet tumble somewhere, and then it would create a bit more of a wound channel. But we're, we're getting pretty skinny at that point, and it's not going to do a whole lot. Whereas the 7.62-39 at 300 yards is going to come in, it's still going to kind of tumble towards the end because the bullet is a bigger caliber in the first place. It's going to have a bigger entrance. You're still going to tend to get a little bit of an opening up in that pattern. So there you have it, the 7.62-39 compared to the 5.56 NATO. They're both very effective and very useful but they both have a few differences here. So think about this, him haul over it a little bit, weigh your options, and let's chat it out in the comments and see what you guys think of. For the record, I own an AR in 5.56. However, I'm about to get myself an AK variant as soon as I can find one for a half decent price. I've really started to like those two. So I'm getting both. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching Michigan Sharpshooters. Don't forget to like the video and look around for more new and useful content. Bye now.